Apple's 2024 lineup of MacBook Airs are here and with so many options, starting from the cheapest through to the most expensive. And in this video, I wanna help you decide which is the best one for you to buy right now, depending on your budget and the features you want. So unless you want to be caught out by Apple's sneaky secret but if marketing technique or want to spend hundreds more than you need to, hold tight and uh, let me explain. Now to get started, let's just run through which MacBook Airs are currently available from Apple's own website. We've got the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air starting from just $9.99, which is Apple's cheapest MacBook. Two different base models in four different colors. And of course, with various processor and memory and storage options. Now next is the newest M3 MacBook Air starting from $10.99. Again, in three different base models and available in four different colors. Again, with various configuration options. And finally, the 15 inch M3 MacBook Air starting at $12.99. Three base options, four colors, and the option of course to upgrade, the usual memory and storage. So there are a lot of options here, but I am going to do my best to run through finding the best MacBook Air for you and discuss why you might want or need to do some of the optional upgrades. So first up, there is the budget option. Also a good recommendation if you're a student looking for something to get you through college or university. Uh, also, don't forget that you can get a decent discount at Apple whilst you are a student or if you know someone who is a student. Now, this is the one where people just want a usable MacBook for the cheapest price possible. And there are really two lines of thought here. Do you go with the previous year's M2 MacBook Air or for the latest generation M3 MacBook Air? Now, depending on what you are doing with the machine, the chances are that the M2 MacBook Air will be just fine for what you need. You know, for general web browsing, email, documents, and just general day-to-day -day productivity type things, it will be fine. But there are some problems with the M2 that might make you want to upgrade to the M3 versions. And this really all stems from the base 256 gig of storage on the M2 MacBook Air. Now, back when this MacBook Air was launched, lots of tech reviewers discovered that those buying the base 256 gig model were getting significantly lower transfer speeds than the previous year's M1 model. And without getting too technical, it's basically because previously Apple would include two chips of storage inside the machine. So when you know reading or writing data, it would kind of share the speed between those two chips. Whereas with the M2 model, and again, only for the base 256 gig storage option, they only included a single chip, which because all the data was going to and from one chip instead of two chips, it was a lot slower because it's writing everything into one place instead of two different places. So if you are typically going to be working with large files or doing anything that requires data to move around a lot, then you might find the M2 performs a lot worse and therefore might want to upgrade to the base M3 MacBook Air, still at 256 gig, but it doesn't have the same problem. Apple basically seems to have learned their lesson with the M2 and fixed that in the M3, but generally that issue aside, and like I've said already, the M2 MacBook Air will be fine for most people. They are still faster, quieter, way, way more power efficient than any Windows and Intel generation of laptops. Now the next tier of buyer, I would say, is the, let's call it the mid tier. Maybe you use this for work and you need something that's you know, capable and portable. Now the M3 MacBook Air provides some nice upgrades over the M2. Now the main one is being able to use a second up to 5K external monitor, providing you have the lid closed on the MacBook Air. So that means two displays, not the second display as in the laptop and the display. Now the M2 only works with one external monitor and that may well be the reason to upgrade for many, many people. There's also Wi-Fi 6E over the M2's Wi-Fi 6, minor upgrades, upgraded microphone for better audio quality in you know audio and video calls. There is an improved color on the M3, which should be more resistant to you know oily fingers leaving marks all over your brand new laptop. There's also hardware accelerated ray tracing. If you need that, I'm not really sure anyone does need that on a MacBook, particularly not a MacBook Air, but hey ho. And that's really about it. But like, honestly, it's a very, very similar machine to the M2 MacBook Air. So if you are looking at buying a decent spec MacBook Air, then the M3 is gonna be the best choice for you today. Now, just a quick one. This video isn't sponsored, but we have been working on something behind the scenes with 1Password, and you can get 50% off a personal or a family subscription using the links down below. And if you are one of the first 1,500 people to sign up for a paid account, then you'll also be entered to win a bundle of pixel goodies. So um, yeah, links all down below for all of those. But 
What about the upgrades? Now there are some things to be aware of and some of them are kind of no-brainers when upgrading to the M3. And here is where I'm gonna try and help you decide when and why you should consider some of the upgrades. Now this is a really slippery slope that I really wanna try and help you navigate, mainly because it is so easy to fall into the trap that Apple set for you with every single product that they have. And that is with two words, but and if. But if I get the M2, I may as well get the upgraded processor and the memory. But if I do that, then it's basically the same price as the 13 inch M3 MacBook Air. So I may as well get that as well. But if I do that, then I need to bump the storage to at least 512 gig because I need that space. Oh, but if I do that, I'm practically the price of a brand new MacBook Pro now. So let's just do that. And within a matter of minutes, you have gone from spending sub $1,000 to over $1,500. Dangerous words. Now the problem though, is that you can't upgrade anything in the MacBook Air after you've bought it. It's not a Windows laptop where you can just, you know, unscrew the bottom and install more memory or more storage. So let's talk about this. So first up is storage. Now, whether you go for the M2 or the M3, the base spec storage is still 256 gigs of storage. And you'll notice that going from 256 gigabytes of storage to the maximum two terabytes upgrade is insanely expensive. And I say that because you can pick up a two terabyte M2 SSD on Amazon for almost a fifth of the price. And you know, it's not like Apple bulk manufactures these products on mass to bring the cost down, right? This is Apple tax at its finest people. So storage wise, there are some options that will avoid you needing to spend the additional on Apple's premium chips. Now, firstly, if you make use of cloud storage like Apple's iCloud or Google Drive, and you're only really using this to work on documents, you know, email, web browsing, then chances are you can just store all of your files in the cloud and you'll be just fine. Now, secondly, you can buy external SSDs at much cheaper prices. Now, yes, it's not as convenient because it's not built in, but it can save you a lot of money and you can go beyond that two terabyte limit as well on Apple's own website. Now, saying that, there are also some really dodgy SSDs around, so I'm gonna leave some links down below for ones that I've tried and I've tested and can fully recommend myself. Now, the next upgrade is memory, again, a very, very premium priced option. And unfortunately, one that you can't just buy more of and you know plug in later. And you also can't download more memory to your laptop unlike some of the dodgy websites say you can. And again, for most people, a gig will be just fine. But if you plan to keep your M2 or M3 MacBook Air for the foreseeable future, you know, you, you're not gonna upgrade it in one to two years time when the latest and greatest Apple is like, released. Perhaps you're even gonna keep it until it dies in like five or seven years time or so then it is, personal opinion, worth upgrading to the 16 gig. Just simple facts, as time goes on, everything we do on these machines consumes more and more memory as time goes on. So memory is one of the better upgrades that you can do to keep your Mac running for longer. And it helps the resale value if and when you come to sell it on further down the line. Now it is also worth going to 16 gig if you plan on doing tasks on the laptop, which naturally consume more memory. Video editing is a big one. Now most people say if you tend to have a lot of tabs open in your web browser, then you need more. But generally speaking, I don't think you do. Unless you're like talking about regularly having over a hundred tabs. Maybe you're working on databases, editing images or photos in Photoshop or Lightroom. Now I would say here that if you think you're doing something on your laptop, that needs more memory, then you probably need more memory. Otherwise, honestly, it's not needed. And really, there is no world that I can see anybody needing 24 gig of memory on a MacBook Air when typically those people will be better off upgrading to the MacBook Pro instead. Speaking of which, buyer's guide coming soon for the MacBook Pros as well. So if you are enjoying this, please do subscribe to the channel for more. I put a ton of work and research into each of these buyer's guides videos, so I hope it's useful to you. But next up is the processor upgrade. And this I feel is an even simpler decision. Now, if you do video or photo editing often, and you want the fastest possible experience editing and you know, exporting your footage on a MacBook Air, then go for the upgrade. Now, if you only do video or photo editing sometime, like maybe when you're traveling, then it's your choice whether it's worth upgrading or not for those few like rare occasions where you'll actually really even need or notice it. And if you're just not doing any of these, flat out, you just don't need it. Now, I did mention earlier, but I'm gonna mention it again just in case. But be careful, you'll find yourself adding all of these options and soon enough, you're basically the price of a MacBook Pro. Now, I even fell into this trap myself. This is the M3 Max MacBook Pro. It is a great machine, but I genuinely 
don't like how heavy this machine is compared to what I did own before, my much lighter M2 MacBook Air that I could take with me when I travel. And I don't even need an M3 Max. I barely even need the M2 MacBook Air. So don't fall into the same trap. And finally, Apple's own websites might not be the best place to buy from. There are other reputable online stores that often have discounts on Apple products, which obviously Apple won't offer themselves on their own store. Now I will link to a few of those down below so you can check those out first. And even then, if you still want to buy from Apple because, you know, Apple, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of Apple's own website, you'll find a very small link called Apple Certified Refurbished, I think it's called, where you can actually genuinely get some good savings on Apple products. They come with full warranties, full support. There's no difference than really buying a new product other than it's being used and sent back. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I actually have a series of buyer's guides for Apple products, which I'll keep updated as new products are released. So subscribe to stay up to date when that happens, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.